Hey guys, coming to you with a new video. Um, this time I'm doing a resin pour over a wood paneled canvas. So it's a cradled canvas, meaning it's kind of shaped like a stretch canvas that you would find in Michaels, but this is all wood. To prep for this, um, as you can see, I have white paint over it. So what I did was basically did two coats of white acrylic paint you can use a primer or um, like a gesso I just decided to use white paint and then I went ahead and laid my geode out the way I wanted it for this pour this particular canvas I am working this technique that the youtuber Dianca pours um, does I completed a course um, to learn more about resin and just kind of the techniques and what can work best for me and I wanted to see how I can do um, or like how you know how different my canvas would come out if I was using a different technique so um, I have already stirred my resin I'm using mass epoxy's resin it's a tabletop epoxy um, I've already mixed that and then I'm gonna go ahead and begin putting my colors in now for this I'm using white as you can see I'm pouring that in and my bottle is leaking it's been leaking like basically since I got it <laughs> um, and then I am also using this um, hot pink I'll put the actual name of the acrylic paint in the description box it's a hot pink um, and a silver, which I'm mixing with a little bit of black to make it a little bit darker, like gray. Um, and then, of course, my my pretty gold mica powder that I use. And you really don't need a lot of acrylic paint, um, mostly because it's it's not supposed to be um, the pigment or type of pigment that you're using. So you don't need a lot for it to you know be that bold pigmented color so um, and you also don't want to put too much where you're going to thicken the resin and it's not going to pour properly so just about like a little bit more than a pea size kind of what you would use to brush your teeth like that's what you need for acrylic paint if you're gonna be doing that so I'm getting my little baby popsicle sticks out go ahead and stir each cup and I can already tell um, I usually can tell like when I would need more pigment as I'm stirring if it doesn't seem opaque enough it seems a little translucent or sheer um, then I would add more pigment which you'll see me doing for the white <laughs> um, also to add on the cradled wood panel I've taped around the sides um, and I think it's called like the shingle method you tape around the sides and it's really easy to come up like you you hardly need any heat and they will remain taped and throughout this entire process so after this and it cures and I come back and do you know another layer it's I'm gonna just keep that tape on there so it's gonna be on there until I am done and that pink is almost like the mats under it's so pretty so we have the white pink and then the dark gray and I'm just making sure there are no streaks in pigment color there are no clumps because that will pour right out onto your canvas and then my gold and I usually pour the most for white because I use white the most it's kind of like my base color and then the other colors are you know I guess an average amount and the gold usually is the least that I would pour because I don't really need a lot less is more definitely so right now I'm just outlining my geode with the gold and I'm not necessarily just putting it on the wood I'm also kind of letting it fall onto some of the crushed glass so that it blends a little bit better when I'm pouring the other colors Next, I'm going in with my white, and you don't have to pour the colors close together. Um, they will definitely leak into each other on their own, um, unless you want to. You know, sometimes it is kind of a pattern to pour them closer together. Um, so whatever works for you. And again, guys, ignore my 5011 projects on my table. I do a lot of projects at once. So I went in and I started pulling the white so that it touched the gold. And if you're following Dianca Poor's um, course, she actually, this is a, like a two, this is the second day basically. This this part where the white is being poured is the second day. So that first day she'll seal the geo down um, and possibly do that outline. And then the second day, you know, that's when she's actually starting her pour. But I am impatient. 
I need immediate <laughs> satisfaction. So I have to do everything at once. Um, and again, I kind of pull techniques from a lot of different videos that I've seen, a lot of different things that I've read about resin. Um, and then I tweak it to work for me, essentially. I think that's how all people kind of work is they, you know, they pull techniques from different places and then they see what works for them and they create a new technique in doing that. So that's what I've done now. Um, right now I'm pouring the hot pink um, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm really not doing it in a pattern. At least I don't mean to. Um, but you'll see me kind of, I, if I do use gray, I'm trying to make sure that the gray is over the white. And it's mostly because I do want it to have that like marble effect where it, you can't really tell it's gray and it's starting to blend into the white and it's, it looks like it's kind of under the white. So that's what I'm attempting to do. And I'm just going back through layering each color. And I believe I still have some resin in my cup. Um, so if I want to add to my geode or if I need more of a certain color, I can go ahead and just refill using my mixing cup. Just making sure I use all of the white. And so here I go with the gold. And again, the gold is really powerful. So um, I try not to use it too much. I know I always get carried away. Um, that's that I honestly that's probably my favorite my favorite color um, when I pour resin is gold. Um, but I know I can't just do like come out with like a gold just straight gold tray. Um, people would think I'm crazy, so. I try to mix it up with my colors. Going back in with the pink. And I'm just stirring the bottom of it because sometimes if you don't stir it properly the first time, um, like I probably didn't do, um, you'll see some pigment streaks or pigment clumps. And I don't want those appearing on my piece because it's really hard to get out. Um, so I'm just trying to make sure everything is stirred properly getting my heat gun and the point of the heat gun for me um, is one of course to get the bubbles out we want to make sure that there are no bubbles on the surface so I'm heating up the resin to make um, all the bubbles go away but then I'm also heating up the resin so that it moves and flows better because I personally don't like harsh lines not saying that it's not good or it's, it's not how it's supposed to be because I've seen some amazing pieces with like crisp lines and it looks beautiful but from my aesthetic I definitely enjoy like the blended kind of like your painting the blended um, meshed colors almost creating a new color not really so I try to blend out my lines especially gold because what gold does is it pushes itself over the other colors um, and it, it just makes this wispy effect um, really pretty, really pretty. So I just try to blend out those harsh lines. And as you can see, the painting looks even different just from me doing that. It looks even more different. Because when it comes down to it, I wouldn't want harsh lines or crisp lines, you know, when I do the actual pour. And then when I go back with my line work, that's more crisp lines. So I'm just kind of putting that on top of each other. I'd rather have this like blended curiosity under my painting and then come back through with those crisp lines to define what I want. Going back, just trying to finish and use up all my resin. Um, and I use the heat gun in the middle of the process because then it tells me or shows me where I need more balance in colors or where I want to put a color. Maybe I don't see too much of that color there. So that was how it was working for the gray. I wasn't seeing too much of the gray and I wanted to see a little bit more. So I went through after the heat gun and added some more, um, some more layers. Here I come with my gold again. Don't judge me, y'all. Heat gunning it out again. And I usually have my heat gun on low for this when I'm just kind of blending out the harsh lines and popping the bubbles. If I really want to change in um, the, I guess, the aesthetic of the piece, then I'll put it on a high temperature, like the high setting for heat gun. And it literally pushes everything so hard. So um, I 
try not to do that too much because that eventually leads to it mixing my colors together like completely and I don't like that. So um, right now it's still in the low setting. I'm just trying to get those harsh lines out, pushing things uh, different places. And it's all about your eye. So something that looks good to me may not look good to someone else. And that's fine because I do my art for me. So what looks good, you know, on my piece may look different on another piece or may not be as interesting so whatever works for what your your eye you know is seeing your eye is the beholder of that and so as you've seen I felt like I needed to add a little bit more white um, just for the balance of the piece so in my mixing container I had more resin left so I put some more in my white cup added some more pigment I'm stirring it making sure all the pigment is being evenly distributed and then coming through with some white. And I'm kind of layering it over the white that's already there and then also um, where I felt like I needed some more balance. And I'm going through heat gunning it out again. And at that point I did have this on a high setting, my heat gun. Um, so you see how hard that is pushing my colors um, compared to when I had it in the lower setting and I was kind of um, softly pushing them around, not necessarily mixing anything. So it's definitely a difference in the heat gun, so be careful. I'm coming back through with some hot pink because I felt like I needed that. So it's it's definitely about layers. Um, you're not, I, I mean, personally, I know I don't, I don't get it right with one pour. Sometimes I have to go over with an entirely second layer. So if that's what you have to do, so be it. I needed some more pink, so I went ahead and added some from my mixing container. Finishing up with some more pink, because the point of this piece was to emphasize the pink. I have pink in just about every project that I do, especially if it's something that I'm choosing to do, um, you know, versus like a commission. Um, but most of my commissions honestly have a lot of pink in it too. As you see, the one on the right, um, the tray that has a lot of pink in it. Um, the Nipsey piece, of course, that's just gold because it was for a guy. So could have used my glitter, my pinks, but when I can't use pink, I go all out as you can see. And just using my heat gun to blend the lines of what I just poured. My arm was hurting. <laughs> taking my gloves off and that's my sign that I'm I should be done but in true Jasmine fashion here I go again um, so basically it looks like I'm just adding um, the little bit of resin that I had left uh, in my mixing cup and then pouring some more of the Michaels crushed glass over it um, and again, for my geode, I use the Walmart Fire Pit Crush Glass, which are big chunks, and then the Michaels Crush Glass, which are much smaller. Um, the Michaels gives it an extra sparkle. It definitely is more glitzy than the Fire Pit Glass. So I felt like the geode was drowning a little bit, and I wanted to um, add some more sparkle back to it. So that's me just putting even more resin, whatever I had left over top because I was getting ready to add some cubic zirconia. And so these particular ones I purchased off of Amazon. And um, I think they were in a pack of 30 or so. They were like an assorted size. Um, and I always drop them. So you'll probably see me dropping <laughs> sticky. That's what I get, I was taking off my gloves. You'll see me dropping some. Um, <laughs> but they're really tiny, but they um, also have like, they're clear. So they don't have like a silver back or a gold back or anything like that. So when you put them on your piece, it's definitely like a bling effect. And I love that. So I'm just adding it in random places that will add some shine or sparkle. Now, I actually did this step um, same day because <laughs> massive moss epoxies tabletop resin um, it cured literally within two hours like hard enough for me to tap on so what I'm doing right now is my glitter they're my glitter lines normally you would do this next day and if your resin hasn't cured definitely do it the next day 
Um, but it's a lot of glitter. Now, when I say a lot, I mean not like just a sprinkle. It's like you're pouring glitter in there with resin until it makes a paste. You put it into a syringe and then you... Um, you just kind of make it more interesting. So you're adding those glitter lines to areas that may need some sparkle. And so that's what I did, added those glitter lines. And then I went in with my line work and the lines of course are doing the same thing, making it interesting, adding some dimension, some depth. Um, and so I also outlined um, once the glitter lines cured, this was next day, I outlined the glitter lines with a gold uh, I think it was a 10 karat marker acrylic marker and that's what I use for my line work I use acrylic markers so I used a gold one to outline um, sections of the glitter lines to make that pop out even more make it more defined um, and then this is not on camera but last couple steps I did once that all dried I sealed it with a clear coat of epoxy just on the board not on the geode and then after that cured I went back over my acrylic lines that I created again so now what that's doing is it's showing you that there are layers to this piece so it looks almost 3d um, and then this is optional you don't have to do this but I um, added I added a layer of gloss varnish and my gold um, my gold mica powder together where it was super liquidy but very pigmented um, and I'll probably try to show this in another video but I added that to the outline of my geode um, and it again that's adding layers adding that depth so it came out really really good I'm really happy with it um, so if you have any questions, let me know. But thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.